Dear viewers of the Tom Photo Channel, in my series of reviewing Fujinon X mount lenses, there's been a major gap so far. I've not yet talked about the very popular Fujinon XF 27mm f2.8 prime lens. We're now fixing this because I've now been using and testing this lens and now's the time to share my findings with you and show some sample images too. There's a newer version of this lens out with weather sealing and aperture ring, but I'm talking about the older, cheaper and more common version of it. The one without an aperture ring and weather sealing and from 2013. Both versions are optically equivalent. This pancake lens is tiny. This is the first thing you'll notice. Tiny as a toy. At only 77 grams and 23 millimeters in length when in front of the camera, it's the smallest Fujinon X-mount lens. It doesn't feel like a real thing and this is precisely one of the reasons you may want to buy it. Imagine how tiny your camera becomes with it. If the camera is a rangefinder style small Fuji, the camera becomes pocketable, like a point and shoot. You cannot get much more than that, and it makes your camera look good too. The lens is plastic, but the mount is metal. There's just one ring, and that's the focus ring. On my copy of the lens, the ring is kind of stiff to turn, more so than on any other Fujinons I've tested. I don't see this as a problem. Let's look at the lens straight on. Where's the glass? The lens measures 6 cm in diameter, but the outer glass element is only 1.5 cm. A dot of glass in a lot of plastic. This is perfectly fine, but the lens certainly looks different. It's a prime lens, so you are stuck at 27 mm. The focal length is a bit unusual. You see 18 and 35 mm much more commonly, and those have some pretty well defined uses but 27mm is right in between. Who would need this focal length? I think mostly travelers in the city who want to photograph streets and occasionally people from the distance. The 27mm is a bit too flat for good portraits. I use this lens around the house for casual photography of children playing or recording when the cat is doing something funny. And it can also work for landscape photography. The f-stop range is 2.8 to 16. Combine the 2.8 with 27mm focal length and you understand why this is not a good bokeh lens. Mostly everything is in kind of good focus all the time. Bokeh is possible with close-up photography, but I've seen lenses with less busy bokeh. The lens is designed for quick snaps when you don't have much time to think about focusing or other aspects. This really makes it great for candid street photography. This lens is incredibly quick at focusing, and it's accurate too. Whip it out and you have a picture in no time. Focusing makes a bit of noise, and this is going to be heard in your video. A small part of the lens moves when you focus. The closest focusing distance is 34 centimeters, so this is not a macro lens. Are the pictures nice is the main question that matters. Sit down and hold on to your chair when you look at your pictures because they are razor sharp and with a very accurate color rendering as well as low aberrations. This lens is one of the sharpest I've seen. If image sharpness and detail matter, and they usually do, this is a very much recommended lens to buy. Also today, many years after its release. Fuji pulls off another magic trick here. It's often the case with Fuji that the packaging of their glass is nothing too special, but what it can do tends to leave the competition behind. So there's lots to love about this lens apart from the relatively large maximal f-stop of 2.8. I find this a bit dark. It'd be nice to have f-stop of 1.8 instead. This would make the lens bigger and more expensive and this is probably why Fuji didn't do it. But I missed the 1.8 with this lens. I also wish the filter size was something else than a highly uncommon 39mm. It also looks funny to put a filter in the middle of the lens. Why not make the filter larger? So what if it mostly covers the plastic part of the lens? The lens cap is equally funny being so small 
and not covering the entire front of the lens. For larger fingers, it's not going to be an easy task to keep this cap from falling in a lake or a canyon somewhere in the middle of the action. I've determined the sweet spot of this lens as I've described before, please see the link below, by photographing a painting at various f-stop values and measuring image sharpness. I was about 75 centimeters from the painting. This distance affects the absolute values of the sharpness graph, but not too much the overall shape. You'll notice two humps in the graph. This tends to be typical of several Fuji lenses. This makes sweet spot difficult to call. I'm seeing the sweet spot at around 6.4. True that f-stop 10 yielded even a bit better sharpness, but this is too close to where the diffraction starts to seriously kick in. This lens is also incredibly sharp at f-stop 2.8 based on the inspection of the photos. The reason it looks much lower here is because the camera was so close to the painting and the edge sharpness at small f-stop falls off because of the distance differences between the object in the corners and the sensor. Not because the lens has bad sharpness in the corners. Please see my Fuji 15 to 45 mm video to see what I mean by that. This link is below. The image quality is what makes me recommend this lens wholeheartedly and so is the size of the lens. Bokeh could be better and the f-stop should go down to 1.8 in the ideal world, but this is not a problem, just a small limitation. This lens is a great buy for traveling and for quick shots when there's no time to think about the shot. Fuji keeps on delivering. Uh, just try to come up with a way to hold on to that tiny lens cap or buy several backup caps in advance. I'd like to thank you for your time and I hope I could provide some value for you. If you consider subscribing to my channel and pressing the like button under the video, that would make me happy. See you soon in my other videos. Bye.